got to figure out ways to afford my uh, gadget addiction, and in some ways, I uh, I know that's a, a never-ending battle. I'm never going to conquer that uh, problem. I don't really see it as a problem, though, and I do my best to you know keep costs at a minimum by if I upgrade something or get a newer version or a new product, then I sell the older whatever it is. And uh, so, you know, I just got new speakers, so now I've got to sell my old speakers. And they're still worth something, um, certainly. I mean, they're good hardware, nothing wrong with it. Uh, so, as you can imagine, I was very, uh, very much looking forward to sharing uh, Shane DK from YouTube or Mr. Bogassi in the chat room at live.perilla.com his tips for investments. And this is something that's going to be good uh, for people of all ages. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I don't think you could ever be too old or too young to really start thinking sm smart about your money. He says, hey, Chris, I liked your top five tips on saving money. One of them dealt with investments, which is really important. He made investments sound like gambling, but it doesn't have to be that way. In fact, invested properly, it's the best thing you can do with your savings. So here are my top five investment tips. And just think about this. If you invest well, uh, you know, it could pay off in big ways, and so you can get a, a newer, bigger, faster computer next time. If you don't invest well, well, then uh, you're going to be stuck with the last year's cheap model that's likely, you know, falling apart before you even get it home. So, pay attention. Number one, keep permanent money separate from mad money. Permanent money is money you want for your retirement, your kids' college tuition for medical emergencies or whatever. This is the money with which you'll want long-term stability. Mad money is money that you can blow and not worry about, whether it's risky investments, gambling, doing a tropical vacation, or buying lots of shoes. Don't touch your permanent money. Number two, learn the difference between investing and speculating. Investing is when you put your money into a market in order to get the market return. Speculating is when you think you can beat that and get a better return with better timing, inside information, or some kind of scheme. Do not speculate with your permanent money. Only mad money. Consider speculating to be the equivalent of gambling. This also means don't fall for the schemes that investment advisors try to convince you to follow. Really, they're about as accurate as psychics. That is, not at all. A disturbing number of them base their schemes on pseudoscience, such as numerology, and none of them have been shown to work long term. Number three, diversify investments. I recommend, uh, recommend that your permanent portfolio be equal part stock, bonds, gold, and cash. Yes, markets are volatile and are prone to slumps, but not all at the same time. Each market responds differently to different economic indicators. For example, right now, stocks, bonds, and cash are all hurting as inflation rises and interest rates fall. But gold is doing very well. Very, very, very well. And, uh, you know, that's something that I know Ponzi would you know, love to hear more about. Oh, I love gold. Yeah, well, I don't. She loves gold. Of course, don't all women love gold? Well, I guess I like gold, too. Not like Uncle Scrooge. Uncle Scrooge, he just used to swim in it. He had this whole vat, and he used to... Oh, wait, no. Uh, sorry, I was thinking of a cartoon. <clears throat> they usually offset each other, and with a robust portfolio, losing years are rare. I do not recommend that you invest in real estate. I have real estate stocks as part of my stock portfolio, but as far as buying a house and considering an investment, I think it's a foolhardy option. After all, if you want to liquidate part of your investment, you can hardly... Er, hardly cut off your back porch and sell it. Buying a home should be considered consumption, not investment. Buying a property to rent should be considered a business venture. Buying property, figuring the value will go up is speculation. Don't do this with your permanent portfolio. Number four, invest in market-wide funds. For stocks, get an S&P 500 fund or some other market fund instead of trading individual stocks. I have five funds in my stock portfolio. S&P large cap, small cap, growth, value, and a real estate fund, all invested in equally. Get a negotiable bonds account instead of buying in individual companies. Get a gold bullion instead of collectible coins, so your value will be the market spot price. For cash, a good money market account will be fine, but you can also get accounts in other currencies, such as euros, for additional protection. And I realize the chat is, you know, kind of off in its own little world. I don't know what more you can expect at 3.45 in the morning. No matter, I will continue. If you had an IRA or IRA and a 401k, you should have many funds to select from that'll get you most of these. Unfortunately, very few have gold accounts, 
Gold stocks are not the same thing. So you may have to go somewhere else for that. And he mentions a particular brand uh, that I'm not going to repeat here. Number five, think long term. Once you have your permanent portfolio, leave it alone. When you put in new money, put it in evenly in all four areas. If you're putting money in monthly, you can alternate months. Stocks one month, bonds a second, etc. to reduce transaction costs. Check it every six months or a year and balance it out. For example, if your money in, in stocks has increased while bonds haven't done so well, move money from stocks to bonds so that they all stay around 20 to 30% of your portfolio. After all, do not panic and take money out of stocks when the stock market starts doing bad. Same with the other areas. Remember, you're not speculating, you're investing. And you want the market's long-term strength, not the fickle instabilities of the short term. This isn't advice for the rich the business executives, or anything like that. Although they could benefit from this advice too. If you do like the other video says and just take $20 out of each paycheck before long, you'll have a nice amount to play around with. Figure out how much of that you want for your retirement and put it in a permanent portfolio. You and your kids will be very glad that you did. And I know it sounds odd and you're thinking, well, Chris, you usually do tech advice, but okay. How do you think I was able to afford a nice Mac computer? How do you think I was able to afford not relatively nice computer speakers? I mean, I don't think they were that expensive, but you know, you can't you can't make money by doing nothing. And for the person who thought this is boring, you're the kind of guy I'm guessing that's you know either grown up or are going to grow up, likely never move out of your parents' basement, do part-time jobs here and there, and never really make much of yourself because you're bored by talking about your future. Just trying to help. That's all. And, and by the way, if, if you are bored, this is the internet. There are a million other things you could be doing other than sitting around when you should be in bed, likely, watching some geek spout on about how you can make more money. Legally, investing is a good thing. It's a great thing. And if anybody else out there has got general investment advice, uh, you know, if you really break it down for you know those of us who really only speak English, it'd be a uh, very uh, you know, it'd be very nice, uh, you know, because I love sharing that information. I like learning more about it. Ponzi loves it. And, uh, you know, you can email me your tips, chris at perillo.com. I, I check my email every five minutes or so, so if I don't respond, no big deal. Uh, I'm getting your email. Don't worry about that. Or at least I should be. No matter, uh, we're typically talking tech around here, and sometimes we'll venture into the waters of, you know, financial stuff. We talked about mint.com the other night, and that's, you know, a way that you can track a lot of your finances and, and uh, in an easy way, a free way, without installing any software right there in your browser. So, uh, yeah, this is all something we have to deal with. Money, 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 money. Makes the world go round. There's a song in that. Anyway, we're typically talking tech 24 hours a day, seven days a week, streaming live video and audio out over the internet. Uh, we're doing it right now, as a matter of fact, and uh, you can feel free to stop by. I don't know what we're talking about right now, but there's only one way for you to find out, and that's by visiting live.